Sam is assigned to menial labor in the citadel, from sorting books in the library to serving meals to the other maesters and even latrine duty, with Sam himself growing increasingly impatient with the daily repetition. After seeing another maester entering a gated section of the library, Sam asks Archmaester Ebros about the long night while helping with a dissection, since very few people in the South believe the White Walkers exist. While Ebros doesn't doubt Sam's awareness of the Walkers, he does assure him that the beginning of this winter is not the end of the world and reminds him of the importance of healthy skepticism. Nevertheless, after stealing some books from the forbidden section of the library, Sam does research with Gilly at her new home, discovering that an abundance of dragonglass exists on Dragonstone, and writes to John to inform him. The next day, while collecting bowls from the sick cells, he is stopped by a patient with an arm covered in grayscale, who asks him if Daenerys Targaryen, the Dragon Queen, has arrived, but Sam claims not to know. He is present when the same patient is deemed unable to treat by Ebros, and that he has six months before the grayscale takes over his mind. Sam then reminds Ebros of Shireen Baratheon's treatment of the condition, but Ebros counters that her maester, Cresson, only managed to stop the spread early, and while she was still at a young age. Once Ebros leaves, Sam asks if there is any family he should write to, to which the patient introduces himself as Jorah Mormont, and that his family forgot about him a long time ago. Sympathetic to his Lord Commander's son, Sam later asks if he can try to heal Jorah using a procedure developed by Archmaester Pylos, but Ebros advises against it. Due to the dangerous nature of the operation to both sides, it was declared forbidden emphasizing that Pylos himself died as a result of contracting grayscale. Undaunted, Sam decides to treat Jorah and secretly visits his quarters after dark. He tells Jorah, you're not dying today, reveals himself to be a sworn brother of the Night's Watch, that he served under Jorah's father, the late Lord Commander Gior Mormont and was present when he died. Sam gives Jorah rum to drink after taking a fortifying swig himself, telling him that the process will be painful. Sam also provides Jorah with a mouthguard so he can focus on biting down on it to help muffle his screams, as he explains that he's performing the procedure without permission. Sam's plan involves using a scalpel to separate and cut away Jorah's infected skin and then applying ointment to the exposed layer, though Jorah gives him a look that tells Sam he shouldn't bother trying to explain it to him. Despite experiencing the pain of having a patch of grayscale skin debrided, Jorah nods his consent for Sam to continue the debridement. When Ebros arrives in the morning to see Dejora, he finds him completely healed. Despite being told by Jorah that no one tended to him, Ebros realizes immediately what Sam has done and arranges an evening meeting in his office. There, he chastises Sam on the potential danger of infecting the rest of the citadel through himself, but then congratulates him on saving Jorah's life with a procedure few maesters have ever mastered. He then immediately orders Sam, who had expected a reward, to copy some old scrolls and tells him that his reward is not being banished from the citadel for ignoring orders. Samwell walks in on a meeting of the conclave, the collective archmaesters, and overhears them discussing a raven sent by Bran Stark about the army of the dead. They are in disbelief over the matter, but Samwell attempts to warn them that the white army is real. He tells the gathered archmaesters that he let Bran beyond the wall and says he is credible for he has survived the perils beyond the wall whereas many knights watch rangers and wildlings have not. Even so, the archmaesters continue to question the credibility of Bran Stark and the validity of the contents of the letter. Archmaester Ebros promises to find the truth of this and will send a raven back to Winterfell asking Maester Wolken for confirmation. As Samwell leaves, he hears the archmaesters laughing over the matter comparing it to past times where they received similar ravens. Samwell later reads with Gilly, who, while reading the journal of High Septon Maynard, discovers that Prince Rager, a mispronunciation of Rager, had his first marriage annulled and secretly remarried while in Dornay. Samwell, however, pays no attention to this and vents his frustration over the citadel likely not doing anything about the undead threat. He resolves to leave Aldtown with Gilly and Little Sam. He gathers dozens of books from the Forbidden Library and the Citadel before departing from Alltown, quoting his father on how he is sick of reading about the achievements of better men. Sam later arrives at Winterfell, having learned of Jon's leaving the Night's Watch and becoming king in the North. He is greeted by Brandon Stark, who recalls how Sam helped him and the reeds pass through the wall. After learning of Bran's new powers as the Three-Eyed Raven, Sam states his intent to help Jon win the war against the Night King. 
Brandon reveals his discovery that John is actually the son of Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, saying that as he was born in Dorne, his bastard surname should actually be Sand. Shocked, Sam counters that the transcription Gilly read to him before said that Rhaegar had annulled his marriage to Elia so that he could marry Lyanna. They both realize that Robert's rebellion was built on a lie and that John, whose birth name was Aegon Targaryen, far from being illegitimate, is the true heir to the Iron Throne. 